All right, hello YouTube. Sorry it's been a few days since I made a video for you, uh, but hopefully uh, I just uploaded one a few minutes ago as, at the time of recording this, which covers the period when Jonathan Edwards was in Northampton. Uh, for me, that was on Wednesday, November the 1st, is when I spent the day in Northampton. And I hope that you enjoyed that video. And I, I looked up a little, a little piece that I wanted to read to you at, here at the beginning of the video before we head to Princeton to cover uh, today's video. But on, uh, on July the 5th, Jonathan Edwards wrote a letter, or actually responded to some letters, that he had received much time earlier from John Erskine, who lived in Scotland. And uh, he speaks in here of how he wanted to get back to him, but just didn't have the time to do it yet. And so about, uh, about two weeks after, he's voted out of Northampton, the place that we just uh, left from in the prior video. He's dismissed from Northampton on uh, June 22, 1750, and then he writes this letter on July 5, 1750. And I just want to read you one little paragraph or so out of this letter. This is from Volume 16 of the works of Jonathan Edwards. He says, <clears throat> But I am now, as it were, thrown upon the wide ocean of the world, and know not what will become of me and my numerous and chargeable family, nor have I any particular door in view. That I depend upon to be open for my future servable, uh, serviceableness. Most, please, no, most places in New England that want a minister would not be forward to invite one with so chargeable a family nor one so far advanced in years, being 46, October the 5th. I am fitted for no other business but study. I should make a poor hand of getting a living by any secular employment. We are in the hands of God, and I bless him. I am not anxious concerning his disposal of us. I hope I shall not distrust him, nor be unwilling to submit to his will. And I have cause of thankfulness that there seems also to be such a disposition in my family. Then he speaks about the various forms of church government, and then he says of his own church government that he had just been uh, voted away from, voted out of, our unsettled, independent, confused way of church government in this land. And he said that for a long time he'd been been out of order uh, for that. So, just to, just to give you a little recap, we looked at Northampton. Edward spent over 20 years there as a pastor. Started out a few years as an assistant for his grandfather. And you look at all these grand years, great grand things that he was able to accomplish through the Spirit of the Lord. Not his own might or his own power, but the Lord's help. It, it, it's almost like it's, it's over. It's over. It's done. Well, we know from Tuesday's video, day number two of the trip, that it wasn't over for him. He went to Stockbridge, and there he wrote the book, among several others, that he, he spoke to Erskine about, uh, referring, referring uh, the controversy concerning free will. And so the Lord, uh, in his providence, moved Edwards away from Northampton, over to Stockbridge so that he could write uh, Freedom of the Will, Original Sin, The Nature of True Virtue, The End for Which God Created the World, and, and I'm sure some, some other works. So uh, that brings us up to speed a little bit. Let's leave Wednesday, Northampton, 4.30 in the afternoon, and let's go to Thursday morning a few minutes before 10 o'clock. So on Thursday morning, I packed up. I'd been at the same hotel for the last uh, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Wake up Thursday morning, and my goal Thursday, um, I don't, I didn't have anywhere specific to be until 3:30 uh, that afternoon, where we're going to go see the room where Jonathan Edwards uh, passed away, where he died. So as I mentioned on the, one of the prior videos, that when I went to go see Jonathan Edwards' birthplace, uh, which was a, uh, a a sign that had been knocked over, and the only thing left was a, a little torn up pole in the ground. Um, on Thursday, I said, well, I'm going uh, pretty much past this way again. Uh, let me stop by and see if they got the sign put back up. Well, I stopped at East Windsor, as you can see, now known as South Windsor. But I stopped at e East Windsor to see if the sign was up, and it still wasn't up. So I continued my adventure uh, down south. Uh, while I was there, I saw a, a DOT worker. Uh, there in a white truck with blinking lights. I stopped and talked to him for a few minutes, and he said that a lot of people had asked what happened to that Edwards birthplace sign, and uh, he said that it probably wouldn't be up until the beginning of next week, 
Uh, but as I've said several times earlier, there's a, a good ending to the story. So I left my, um, I asked him, I said, you know, since I, I probably won't ever get to make my way up here again, can I leave my name and number with you? And when the, when the sign gets put back up, and he said that he would send me, a, send me a picture of it when it was put back up, probably at least on into next week after I was going to be gone. So I left uh, East Windsor again, not having seen the sign that marked where Jonathan Edwards was born. So I continued my travels. I stopped back in Hartford a second time. The first time I tried to do that was on uh, Monday afternoon. Um, but the, the traffic and getting late in the day, I ended up uh, deciding I, I would push that off. And so uh, here it worked out great. Thursday uh, morning, I had time to stop back by there again. So the name Thomas Hooker, you may be familiar with that name. Um, along with Thomas Hooker, you see the name up here towards the top, William Edwards. So William Edwards was one of the uh, original uh, folks who came on over, and Mr. William Edwards would be the first in the, the line of Jonathan Edwards and his uh, family who, uh, who were here in the land. So when William Edwards came over, he brought with him, or excuse me, when William Edwards came over, when he was over here, he gave birth to Richard Edwards, and you see his tombstone on the left. Richard Edwards is the first Edwards that was born here in our land. Richard Edwards, I can't remember off the top of my head the entire story, um, but you can go back read and read it maybe in, uh, in uh, Murray's biography or uh, Marston's biography. Read a little bit about the history in uh, Richard, and I believe his wife's name was Mary. I could be wrong, but I think his Richard Edwards' wife was Mary. And she had some, some issues. Most people say she had some, some issues in her mind. And, uh, but as a result, of, or excuse me, in spite of that, uh, their marriage resulted in a son being born named Timothy. And if you've watched these videos in the order that I've uploaded them, you'll know that Timothy Edwards was the father of Jonathan. So even in bad marriages, or marriages that are not picture perfect, um, the, the Lord still knows what he's doing. And uh, through that, not to excuse perhaps the things that went on in their marriage, uh, but in spite of all the, the foolishness of man, God used that marriage, that union, to give birth to Timothy Edwards. So William Edwards comes over. He he fathered Richard Edwards, and Richard, uh, the first Edwards in our land, here we can see where he was uh, laid to rest, he had a son named Timothy, which had Jonathan. Little tidbit, if you ever are able to go here to this cemetery in downtown Hartford, um, the, the easiest way to find it, you're going to come in a front gate over here in this direction, and then you'll see the, the monument there in the middle. Um, come back this way, look towards that building that you see in the back of the picture, and kind of line yourself up, and then you'll be able to see that, tomb, that tombstone right there. The, uh, the markers are all old, and a lot of them hard to read. I made two, I know at least two passes around the cemetery looking for it uh, before I was able to find it. I had a picture of it. Let me recommend it one more time. I had a picture of it in this book right here, and so I knew the, the shape that I was looking for, um, but it was just, just being able to find it. So eventually, eventually I found it. Um, so after I left Hartford, my next stop was in Haddam, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, H-A-D-D-A-M, Haddam, Connecticut. On the Wednesday video, day three of my Jonathan Edwards trip, I showed you the resting place for the body of David Brainerd, where he was laid the rest, and then shortly thereafter, his sister in Christ, whom he loved dearly, the daughter of Jonathan and Sarah Edwards, Jerusha, she was laid right there next to him. At first, I, I believe I'd seen a picture of this before, um, but I'd never actually gotten a good location of where, where it was. Um, I'd never been able to find anything online in my short time looking and so while I was there, and I still had, you know, a, a few hours to get down to, to Princeton, New Jersey, uh, uh, I miss, the day before, Miss Elise bernier Feely at the Forbes Library in Northampton, she found uh, the directions for me to find the birth marker for David Brainerd. So since I'd seen, 
his place marking uh, where he was where he was buried. Um, I wanted to make use of the the one opportunity I had to to be up in this part of the country and also see where Brainerd was born. It was uh, about 30, 30, 40 minutes out of the way, um, but was able to make good time and get there to it. Did not get to eat lunch that day, um, but did get to see the uh, the Brainerd um, the Brainerd birth marker. And I'll uh, show you a zoomed in picture and read that for you opposite this spot. So um, here you can see on the map right here, there's a, a road, a little gray road, a, more of a, a main yellow road right there. Um, the uh, the intersection I'll zoom in on it for you if by chance anyone ever wants to to find this it was probably the most difficult thing to find on this trip um, you can see Saybrook Road uh, was going that direction and then it makes a sharp right and goes uphill to uh, Walkley Hill Road so Walkley Hill Road goes up and then on your right about 50 feet after you bear off to the right 50, 75 feet, this large marker will be on uh, your right. Then the road will be to your left, or you're in the road, and then to your left there's a house that sits right there, a flat piece of land, and then it keeps going downhill as you get towards the river there where you see the red um, the red drop pin. Here it, there in the middle of your screen. So uh, somewhere probably, I'm guessing, in that flat land between the rock and the river down at the bottom, somewhere in that flat land would have stood the house where Brainerd was born. David Brainerd, born uh, April 20th, 1718. A servant of God, wise in his knowledge of men, self-forgetful in his devotion, of single-hearted humility, careless of the dangers of the frontier, undismayed before failing health, he gave his brief manhood to the material and spiritual upbuilding of the Indians. He died at Northampton, Massachusetts, October 9th, 1747. Uh, very, very young age, several years younger than I am right now. And what an impact, what an impact. I believe the story is he was converted at the age of 21, if I remember correctly, and died at the age of 29. Eight years, and he changed the course of Christian missions and, and history. Uh, Christian missions and, and in doing so, the, the history of the church. We don't know how much the Lord's going to use us in this life. You know, what short time we have, whether we only have eight years to serve the Lord or we serve Him for 80 years, relatively speaking, is still a short time. Uh, but God can use us in a lot of different ways. And in God's providence, there's where Brainerd would born, was born. And then we saw where Brainerd died and where he died was in the home of one of the uh, prolific authors of the day, Mr. Jonathan Edwards. And Mr. Jonathan set aside some of his projects uh, to publish the uh, uh, right there in blue, right next to the Murray biography, that blue spine right there, the diary and journal of David Brainerd. And Christian missions and the rest is history. All right, so after I left um, Haddam, Connecticut, where David Brainerd was born. My next adventure was to get to Princeton, New Jersey. Now you must remember, I, I work at a church in a town that has one red light, one, uh, two gas, yeah, two gas stations, one red light, um, and uh, not too, too much more than that. You go up the road about 10, 15 minutes, you get to a larger town where there's a Walmart and things like that. So I'm not used to uh, being in a lot of traffic. Uh, definitely not used to getting lost in New York City. I, there was a bridge, and there I came up to an exit, and it had like, I mean, it was like four, five, six options you could take, and I, I didn't have a clue what to do. The GPS had all these arrows and uh, ended up having to make a loop through, uh, I believe it was uh, Broadway Road or Street or whatever it is in New York. So that set me back for a little bit. So about... Uh, Nearly, nearly four hours after that, three and a half hours later, um, I, I, I got to New Jersey, got to Princeton University. The next thing we're going to see is where Jonathan Edwards died. What we have here is the president's house. Um, the name is M-C-L-A-E-N. Uh, it's either the McLean or McLean house. I'm going to say McLean, and feel free to correct me. Um, the lady told me, but I've, I've already forgotten how to pronounce it. But the McLean House at Princeton University, also known 
as the former president's house. And in this house uh, where Jonathan Edwards would have spent the last few months of his life, that is where the first, forgive me, either the first six or the first eight of the presidents of the College of New Jersey, now known as Princeton, made their uh, residence as president of the school. So, uh, Jonathan Edwards, when he went in that day, the house would have looked like that there on the right. Over on the left, forgive me again if I'm mispronouncing it, N-A-S-S-A-U, Nassau Hall, there at uh, the College of New Jersey. That's what it would have looked like in the days of Jonathan Edwards. Um, Tuesday's video, was when we were in Stockbridge in January of 1758. That is when um, his son-in-law, Mr. Burr, died. He was president of the school. Um, and after Mr. Burr died, I don't know how exactly that search or that committee was formed or took place. I uh, don't know the history on that. But uh, Jonathan Edwards ended up becoming the, the one that was picked. Um, my understanding, he, um, he had a council. I, I don't know who formed that council, if he picked everyone or if he nominated someone and then he picked the other people, I don't know. But um, it's almost as if he trusted the, a council of elders, wisdom and numbers, to, uh, to, to recommend for him what he should do. And they said, yeah, Jonathan, uh, we think this is something you should do. So he left Stockbridge uh, there in January. He moved to Princeton, New Jersey, uh, intending on his family to come after the winter months had passed. Well, as the story goes, while he's here, well, before we go any further, let's, uh, let me show you the picture. So there's the plaque on the house when you first go in. Uh, a very special thank you. I, I won't mention on my name. I don't know if they would uh, want me to or not, but I didn't ask. But a, just as Miss Bernier Feely helped me at, New, at uh, Northampton on Wednesday, on uh, Thursday here at the uh, here at Princeton University, when I knew that this trip was going to take place, I called and I, I found out the, the, the place where Jonathan Edwards died, the, the building where he died. I got a phone number for that building and I called and spoke with a, an assistant uh, on the bottom floor and she said that she was going to refer me to uh, to the or she, probably the secretary on, in that building. She referred me upstairs to an assistant to a vice president of a particular um, function there at the school. I'll, I'll leave that out. So uh, this uh, this uh, lady who is a, a, vice, a vice president of such and such for Princeton University. So I spoke with the assistant, explained to her what I wanted to do. Um, she, uh, I, I then sent her and the, the VP an email explain what I wanted to do and then they got back with me and told me that that was that that would be fine that they would take out a few minutes of the day uh, to, to show me around the house so another example during this week where something did not have to work out like it did but it did and I'm so thankful for that and they they actually ended up spending about 30 minutes with me out of the out of their busy time uh, showing me around so while we're here um, here is a replica of the Badger portraits, which I'll talk to you about on tomorrow's video, or the next day's journey. Um, but here is a replica of what hangs inside of the uh, private home for the Jonathan Edwards College at Yale University. And at Princeton, they have a replica of the Badger portraits of Jonathan on your left, obviously, and then Sarah on your right. Uh, again, the picture of what it would have looked like in Edwards' day. After we left there, uh, we went upstairs. We come up a, uh, a flight of stairs. We came to the front of the house. When you're looking at the front and the porch there, or the, the little entryway, this house would be facing, if you were standing at this fireplace and you turned around and looked out the window, you would be looking into the front yard of that home over on the left side of the house. You can see there's a fireplace in the back right. Uh, there's a bookshelf that lines, or excuse me, the, the back. The door in the back right, bookshelf lines the right wall. Windows line the left wall. And then on the back wall, more windows. And on that back wall near the front of the house would be the desk uh, for this vice president. So this is her, her private office. This is where she works at upstairs at the, uh, the McLean house. Um, I don't know where Edwards would have been positioned uh, in this bedroom. I'm going to assume that he was not on the same wall as two doors and a fireplace. Um, so that leaves either maybe he was on this wall looking out the windows 
Um, maybe he was near one of the windows uh, where he could see outside and, and look outside. I, I don't know. Um, but, but whatever place in this room he was at, this room that we're looking at, which I was able to, to go inside, that's the room on March 22nd, 1758, where Jonathan Edwards, who for many years had preached uh, that what we see in this life is the drop, is the grains of sand, is the scattered beams, uh, but after he took his final breath and said, I believe I'm correct, trust God and you need not fear, he no longer saw the drop, but he saw the ocean. He no longer saw the scattered beams, but he saw the full light of God's glory. In this room is where he, uh, he uh, composed, uh, dictated a letter uh, to his daughter Lucy uh, to tell his family. Uh, he says that it appears that, it'd be the, uh, that it's the will of God that I should shortly leave you. Uh, he speaks some kind words to his wife, Sarah, and says that the union that they've had has been such a, uh, the uncommon union that has uh, existed between them has been um, of such, um, is of such a spiritual nature that he trusts that it, um, that it wouldn't end here, but that it would continue forever. He also spoke to his children and said that their father was about to leave them, but he entreated them to seek a father that would never fail. Very beautiful letter. Uh, you can read that. You can find that online. Look it up. Also, uh, related to this time, the doctor who was there in the room tending to him, he also wrote a letter to the wife, Sarah Edwards, that said death had certainly lost its sting as to him. Death had lost its sting to him. He, he took, a, took a shot for an uh, uh, inoculation for smallpox, um, and uh, I, I don't know exactly what happened in his body, uh, but um, my understanding, his throat, he had a reaction of, of some sorts. His throat swole up, w was swollen, was not able to eat or drink, and then just, just passed away, passed away. Um, only in the Lord's wisdom uh, does he know, does God know, why, John, why Jonathan Edwards died at the age of 54 years old instead of 84 or 94 or 74 only the Lord knows why he didn't let Jonathan uh, write a new work concerning uh, uh, you know, um, the, the history of redemption and uh, theology set in a new, a new framework. Um, who knows what else he could have he uh, put his mind to and his pen to paper and compose. But in, the Lord's, in, in, in God's ultimate wisdom, it did not surprise God when Jonathan Edwards died on March 22, 1758. It may have shocked the world, uh, but it did not shock God. And God uh, allowed that happen uh, for his purposes. And in that room is where that happened. One little brief uh, personal note. You know, I've, I've shared several of these on the video. Um, March 22nd, very important day of my life. If, you've, uh, if you visit my website at PreacherTony.com and, and click on the testimony, you'll see some things there about my mother. March 22nd, 1994, it's when my mother was murdered um, by my stepfather. I was 10 years old, and, uh, and he, he came in the house one day, shot and killed her. A uh, lot behind that bad marriage that they had, abusive marriage and such. And So on March 22nd, 1994, is when my life drastically changed due to a death. And so as I, I look more and more into, into Edwards, in his life, in his writings, when I, when I realized that he also died on March 22nd, 1758. Now again, Jonathan Edwards did not form me naturally, uh, so I'm not going to try to put him on the, the same pedestal as my mother, obviously, or of course. Um, but the last few years, I would have to admit that on March 22nd, as well as you know many other days, but on March 22nd concerning this anniversary date, I have to think of when that day in my life just changed everything, when my mother was killed, and then I, that night, uh, received a, a new family. They were actually my babysitters, uh, child care providers. They became my new parents. And so March 22nd, my life drastically changed in a, in a, in a, yeah, in a bad, evil way. But Romans 8:28, while that actual event may not have been good, God worked it get together for good in my life and, and other people involved. Well, um... March 22nd, 1758, I did not know how much impact that that life would have on me, but in the last few years, it's been obvious that he has affected my, uh, 
my thinking, uh, the, the things I can understand that he wrote that I read. Um, it, it, you can't deny that he's affected my love for the Lord, hopefully in a good way. Um, so, March 22nd, 1758, Jonathan Edwards left us. Uh, that room, they're on the second floor. Um, this window right here on the left side of your screen would be the same set of windows there um, on that little second floor level, right above that little little addition there on the left. So, uh, about 4 o'clock that afternoon, I left the McLean house where the uh, presidents used to have lived, and I made my way over to the Princeton uh, Cemetery. Another example of God's kind providence and graciousness during this trip, you're looking at a cemetery that is huge, very big, very big. I'll zoom in for you. You can, you can see this dark gray outline here. Um, that is a very big cemetery that takes up a, a wide area. I pull into the gate there. I pull in. Maybe five, seven, ten minutes later, someone comes walking down the road holding some coffee in their hand. And uh, they, they were closing one of the gates, getting it uh, shut for the evening, as the sun would be going down shortly. And I asked him, I said, sir, uh, do you work here or are familiar with this? And he said that he was the caretaker for that cemetery. Perfect. You know, who else would I rather ask where Jonathan Edwards is buried at? So I asked him, I said, can you tell me where Mr. Jonathan Edwards is? And he, he pointed over and showed me um, where Jonathan Edwards was buried. So that worked out. Uh, really, really well. Instead of spending a whole lot of time, and as you can see, it was getting dark. Instead of spending, instead, instead of uh, spending a whole lot of time looking for the uh, the tomb of Jonathan Edwards, uh, was able to be pointed directly at it. Um, all because the the caretaker went to go grab some coffee and came back the same time I did. Uh, so here you are. Uh, you're looking uh, looking this direction. The McLean House would be back over that way, a few blocks or so, and uh, I, spent, I stood here for, for quite a little while. Here we see this first picture, so 406 was my last picture at the President's house, 443 would be my next picture at the, uh, at the graveyard, and I spent a, a good little while, a good little while uh, there, uh, the next 45 minutes or so, just in that, in that one spot. Didn't break down crying, didn't boo-hoo, didn't ask the Lord if he could raise him from the dead so I could talk to him. Nothing like that. Uh, but just spent some time thinking. You know, the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes that it's better to go to the house of mourning than the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men. And the living will lay it to heart. You know, we'll get wisdom that the people who are alive, when they spend time at a place of death instead of a place of merriment and, and mirth, it, it'll set in. Hey, I'm going to die. One day... I am going to die. I can't remember. Oh, okay, here we go. Resolution number nine. Jonathan Edwards says, Resolved to think much on all occasions of my dying and of the common circumstances which attend death. Resolution number nine on his Edwards resolutions. You can look that up. And then the next resolution after that, number 10, I believe it is, is when he sped, said, uh, when he when he when he felt pain, he needed to think about what what it felt like to be martyred or to to go to hell. So this was a very intense man, uh, to use the words of Mr. Minkema that I talked to on Friday. Uh, Edwards was was intense. He he was not the casual average American uh, Christian. He 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 resolved to do all for the glory of God. Um, to live while he might live, to live with his all for the Lord. Uh, I believe it's the Marsden biography that says towards the end of the book, every day Edwards prepared to die. Edwards prepared for death every day in the way he lived. And if you prepare for death every single day, you know, what kind of impact could we have if we realized, hey, I may not die in 10 years. I may not die in six months. As I told a, a 39-year-old who's part of our church who's at hospice right now with, with cancer and tumors and just real bad situation, I told her, I said, you know, only the Lord knows what's going to happen in your situation. I said, I may die before you do. I, I'm not promised that just because I appear to be healthy that, that I'm going to live 60 years longer than you are. I may die on my way home from leaving the hospice house after being here to, to, to talk with you and help you. 
So we don't know when we're going to leave this world. But if we live every day as if it were our last, when that last day does come, we won't be surprised and shocked. All right, so Jonathan Edwards, uh, let me give you a picture of uh, some of these. All right, so uh, there, it's in Latin. Um, let me grab something for you real fast. almost forgot that I had this, um, but a guy at our church who, uh, who took Latin in school, he, he said that he had not done it in a while, but he tried to look it up for me. I tried looking online, trying to find a, uh, in English what it says on Edward's tombstone, and I, and I may have missed it. It may be in a book I already have and just haven't read it yet, but the, uh, the tombstone of Edward's, uh, and again, this is someone who uh, took Latin several years ago in college, and he was... Uh, he said it may not be perfect, um, but he uh, he tried to help me out. Um, and I'll just I'll just read this for you, going from top to bottom, uh, according to nature, holy or sacred memory. A man of great respect, Jonathan Edwards, Master of the Arts, President of the College of New Jersey, born near Windsor, Connecticut, October fifth, seventeen o three, under the word, born of Father Reverend Timothy Edwards. Educated or trained at the College of Yale, installed at Northampton Church, February 15, 1727. Dismissed from that place, June 22, 1750. Um, and and I think he couldn't, it, the way he's got it, I don't think he could make out the next line or so. Uh, he, he didn't know, but it says, um, Made President of Nassau Hall, February 16, 1758. He died in victory March 22nd, the same year, according to nature, at the age of 55. Here, too brief. Here lies the human part. How excellent a character would you ask for, uh, Traveler? He was tall, but meager, simple, uh, studied intensely. Self-restrained and painstakingly simple, sharp intelligence. Uh, uh, something... Um, something second to no man distinguished in the liberal arts and experiential knowledge of the sciences greatest critic of religious ceremonies extraordinary theologians with hardly an equivalent um, clear bright radiant preacher faithful champion of the christian faith grave preacher solemn established distinguished and with god's favor the greatest success distinguished in piety distinguished in piety his habit custom strict but fair, just, and kind to another. He lived esteemed, revered, but died lamented. How much sorrow his leaving caused. Um, alas, how great wisdom. Alas, learning, education, and worship. The college and the church lament the loss. But I admit, the heavens rejoice. Go, traveler, follow the faithful footsteps. Now again, uh, thankful to, to Brother Michael here at the church for uh, writing that out for me. He said that you know he was doing his best at some of that, um, but it, it's, it's a lot better than I could do. All I could make out was the name, Jonathan Edwards and the dates, other than that. Uh, so that, that was a great help, great help. All right, so uh, after I spent some time there just reflecting on the, the life of Jonathan Edwards and the fact that one day we're going to die, um, that was pretty much it at the College of New Jersey, as Edwards would have called it, what we now know as Princeton University, where their president, Mr. Jonathan Edwards, uh, spent only a few months, a couple of, two and a half months or so, and died uh, March 22nd, 1758. Well, that was the next to the last day of my Jonathan Edwards trip on November the 2nd, 2017, on Thursday, and then Friday, I will show you on the next video on Friday, November the 3rd of 2017. I was able to spend the day at Yale University, uh, eat lunch with Mr. Ken uh, Mikama, and then go to the Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library and hold in my own hands some of the works of Jonathan Edwards. All right, until then, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you'll like this video. I hope you'll subscribe to Tony Walker 23 on YouTube. I hope that you'll save the playlist. And hopefully all of that will work together so you'll be notified when the next uh, video is uploaded. If you will, uh, visit the website at PreacherTony.com. While you're there, you can listen to sermons if you choose to do so. You can check out uh, my testimony if you'd like to read that. 
if you click on JE Trip, you'll see a, a link to this video, which you're watching now, but you'll also see the pictures um, and a, a little short description up under most of those pictures. Uh, a few things that I've written and uh, things such as that. So you can check all that out at PreacherTony.com. Uh, mostly, if you know anyone else who is interested in the life of Jonathan Edwards or someone who may be in my shoes, they're not a scholar, maybe some of the books they've been handed, they, they have to even look up words to figure out what they're doing. Maybe you know someone who's just getting interested in church history and for whatever reason the Lord has led them to Jonathan Edwards and that lineage. Maybe they're, they're in the same place as me. Maybe they struggle some of the things they read with Jonathan Edwards, but the things they do read, they understand so well that it either moves them to tears of joy or tears of repentance, whatever the case may be. If you'll send these videos to them and, and recommend those to, to other Edwards fans, scholars, laymen, fanboys, whatever the case is, uh, I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, thanks for watching these videos, and I'll see you on the next video as we go to Yale University. Take care. Bye-bye.